so far this year, I feel like I have found the magical unicorn homeschool schedule. Now I'm still waiting for the other shoe to drop because I feel like that doesn't exist, but let's talk about what's working for me this year. I'm Ryan, Christ following wife and stay at home mom to four sweet boys. I'm growing and learning how to glorify Christ as a wife, mom, homemaker, and teacher. So come and grow and learn with me. I am Mama on Mission. So I know we're still very early into the homeschool year, but we are starting out strong. We are getting all of our work done. We're getting done way earlier than I thought we would. And everyone's been having a good attitude about it and everyone's staying busy. So either I have just struck it rich or something's gonna happen and this is all gonna go out the window, but that's okay, it's working for us now. <laughs> so the problem I've always had with trying to find a schedule is that a lot of the ones that I would find on YouTube or by searching different blogs and stuff like that is that a lot of them are for kids who are close in age, right? They're all elementary school kids or they're all mostly elementary school kids with maybe one older kid kind of thrown in the mix. But my kids are kind of spaced out. I don't have the typical two year, two year, two year gap, right? And so I have a middle schooler who's mostly independent, but still needs, you know, some of that direction. I have an elementary kid who, you know, is kind of 50 50 on independent and not. I have a kindergartner who very much depends on me and has very little independent work. And then I have a toddler who needs me all the time because you never know what he's going to get into, you know, nail polish and bathroom cleaners. And we're not going to go into all that, um, but he's very busy. Let's just say that. So a lot of those schedules that I was seeing were, you know, for very independent students or for very little kids or for someone who doesn't have a toddler or for someone who just is kind of like an unschooler and not very rigorous in their homeschooling. And not that I'm the most rigorous person there is when it comes to homeschooling because I know people who are a lot more rigorous than I am, but I definitely do not lean in that unschooling way of doing things. So every year our schedule has changed a little bit, um, but the thing that has kind of worked for us the most often is to use block scheduling. And so that is where you just set a chunk of time aside where you work on X, Y, Z. But when that timer goes off, you stop what you're doing and you move on and you can come back to it later maybe. Um, but that way my kids know, hey, you only have to do an hour of this thing. You only have to do 30 minutes of this thing, whatever it may be. Um, they have a chunk of time that they know, hey, I need to work on these things in this order and see how far I can get. And for some reason, having that end in sight really helps them. So what was important to us this year when kind of deciding how we were going to implement this is we needed to have a dedicated baby time. What I mean by that is I needed to have time where the toddler and I had some one-on-one -on -one time. So last year I was nursing him for most of the school year. So we just kind of inevitably had that one-on-one -on -one bonding time, right? Well, now he's a toddler, he's up, he's running around, not nursing anymore. And I kind of just like use him as a tag along and he's just kind of doing whatever we're doing. And there's nothing wrong with that but I really found myself kind of missing that time to like get on his level and just enjoy him. Um, trust me, he doesn't let himself be forgotten for very long, <laughs> um, but I was needing to just kind of like connect with him and you kind of lament as a mom, the more kids you have, you think back to how you did things with your oldest. And I think back to all the time that we spent reading books and reading books and reading books and then playing Hot Wheels and then reading some more books um, and then playing animals and reading more books. And all the time we spent learning to count and learning our shapes and our colors. And with each child, I've done that a little less each time because there's older ones who are now learning how to read and now they're learning long division and now they're learning chemistry, you know? And so I feel like you have to kind of force yourself to still sit down with those little ones and make sure they're getting some mama time, even if it's not as rigorous and as detailed as you wanted it to be, you know, like you had it with your oldest. What was also important to us is that I needed to alternate some subjects to avoid burnout. I didn't want their huge sit down time to be just one big chunk where they were sitting at a desk for a few hours at a time, just writing and figuring and doing all the things. Um, I needed to kind of break that up so that their brains didn't just fry. I also wanted to give them the freedom to work ahead. And that's kind of what block scheduling does for us. If they have a chunk of time where they have a set list of things to work on, they can work as fast as they want to, as long as they're working diligently. And then I also had to have a set time for things that weren't necessarily school. And that included exercise and a time to tend to my house. Cause last year we were getting all the school done, but my house last year was a wreck. And I was just stressed all the time because I don't do well with clutter. And with four kids, clutter happens. <laughs> 
Um, and so we have to kind of mix up our school time with our cleanup time because saving all of the cleaning up for the end of the day was not working for us. And we also had to have time for quiet. We haven't done quiet time in several years and it's coming back this year and it has been lovely. So here's what a typical day will look like for us. Um, I get up at 5.30, I have my quiet time, I have my Bible time, my prayer time, um, I shower and drink my coffee and all those good things um, and try to get that all done before the kids get up at 7. So at 7, they are up, they're making breakfast, they're taking care of their dog, they're getting dressed, they're brushing their teeth, all of those, you know, kind of hygiene things and they're making their beds. So they have from 7 to 8 to do that. At 8 o'clock, it is school time. Drop everything you're doing and come to school. Um, we have an hour of morning time, which I have a video coming out talking all about what we do for our morning time. So be sure to check that out. And then after our morning time where we've sat down and cuddled and read and all the things for an hour, then we have our 30 minute exercise block. So I used to be very adamant about getting my exercise in every day. And with each kid that's come in, that has gotten harder and harder. And so I just decided this year, no more excuses. I'm just gonna exercise with them. And if that means we do silly workout videos for 30 minutes, so be it. If that means we go walk up and down my hills, push in the stroller, so be it. Um, I'm getting some sort of exercise in every school day that we have, even if it's not, you know, the full hour long P90X workouts that I used to do. Um, it's something which is a lot better than nothing. So then at 930, we transitioned downstairs into our school room. So that morning time happened up in our living room. That's just where we're most comfortable. Um, that exercise time happened, you know, either in the living room or outside. And then we moved downstairs and from 9.30 to 10.15, my two older boys, seventh grade and fifth grade, um, get to their independent work. So independent work for them is their math, their language arts, their spelling, their handwriting, and their typing. Um, now those are all things that I go over with them and discuss with them. It's not like I just leave them on their own, um, but those are things that I don't just have to sit and teach them. Either they teach themselves, like with handwriting and spelling, um, or, with language arts and math, we have videos that they watch. And then they also have a textbook to read and then they have work to do um, later on in the day. I connect with them and go over their work with them. So while those two are doing their independent work, then I am doing it kindergarten with my five-year-old. Now, this usually takes a little longer than the allotted 45 minutes, um, but I try to get in all of the stuff that requires the most hands-on from me first. So the things where I'm reading a lot or teaching a new concept, I do that first. Then the things that are more, you know, a worksheet or more just he needs me near, but doesn't need me to actually like teach him. I save those for last because then if that kind of bleeds into our second block, that's okay. And while all of this is going on, I get an activity out for the one-year-old. Now, sometimes that is something, you know, like I get all out the Hot Wheels. He's obsessed with cars. And so I'll get out the giant bucket of Hot Wheels or the Duplos or something like that. Sometimes it's as little as, you know, they like trash. And so are <laughs> things that most people consider trash. I'll get out the little pom-poms and some cups and he just dumps them and all the things. Or I have one of those little, you know, oatmeal containers where you put the things in the holes and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but I just kind of rotate those things out so that he doesn't get too used to one thing and hopefully he keeps busy. It usually works, sometimes not, but usually it works. So then at 10, 15, like I said, my kindergartner is wrapping up, maybe doing those last few things that don't require much of me. And once he's done, he goes and plays with the baby. And so that would be the time that I typically switch the activity. So I'll put away whatever the baby was playing with and we'll get out something new. Um, or I'll get able something out sometimes, my five-year-old, and sometimes get the baby out something, depending on if they're, you know, getting along that day or not. And then my big boys during this time, I work with my fifth grader first. And while I'm working with him, typically the seventh grader is still finishing up some of his independent work. And then when I am working with my fifth grader, I'm going over his math. Then I go over his language arts, make sure he scores well on that. And if he scored well on it, that means he understands it. If not, then I will go back over it and kind of reteach it to him um, if the video just wasn't clicking for him. And then we switch. Then he goes and works on any independent work he has left. If he doesn't have any left, he'll go play with the little kids. Um, and I will work with my seventh grader. Again, same thing, going over his language arts, going over his math, making sure he understands it, giving him the rest of his math to work on by himself. And then from that's from 10, 15 to 12. So during that time, typically I get my one-on-one -on -one time in with the big boys and they are able to finish up their independent work. And then at 12, we drop all school. We do a 
whole family tidy. And so we all pitch in and we just pick up wherever we are. And so typically we're downstairs. So we will just pick up all the stuff the baby's got now, all the stuff the kindergartners played with, put away all of our school stuff. And that just kind of puts a reset in our day um, so that we're not saving that all till the end of the day and just having a huge mess to deal with. Now, if we have also been kind of messy upstairs, there shouldn't really be a reason for us to be messy that early in the day but sometimes we are, we will also do a pickup up there. Or sometimes we'll divide and conquer. I'll leave the big boys downstairs and me and the kindergarten will come upstairs to clean. Um, but no matter what, we're picking up during that time. And then while I am making lunch, um, they all go do their daily chore, which I have a video coming out soon about how we handle chores and everything like that. Um, but this is when they get their daily chore done. They have one specific task each day that they have to tend to, and that's when they do that. And then while we eat lunch, we listen to our science lesson and do any work that comes with that, whether that be a worksheet or an experiment or whatever, we kind of do that around lunch. So lunch slash tidy slash science lasts from 12 to 1.30. Then at 1.30, if anyone needs to finish anything, they get it done then. Sometimes they don't have anything and they're just allowed to go play. Sometimes they have a lot and they have to do that. Um, or sometimes it is stuff that requires me. So if we didn't get our history finished during our morning time, then we will add that to the end of the day. The goal here is for it to mostly be independent type stuff that needs to be done at this point. And I go hang out with the baby. This is when we get the one-on-one -on -one time with the baby. Um, where I go play with him and I'll read him books and you know whatever kind of he's in the mood for that day and then I'm just kind of in the same vicinity as the boys so that if they need something you know if they have a question on their math or something they have me right there to help them um, but also within this hour like I said sometimes we have to finish a read aloud or something like that so I don't get a whole hour with the baby but I at least get some time with the baby. And then at 2.30 for the three olders, it is quiet time. I don't really care what they do as long as it is quiet and they are by themselves. And so I used to let them kind of like play together, but that never stays quiet for very long. And so I put Abel upstairs with me in a room and I put the big boys, one in their bedroom, one in the school room. And I don't care if they color, I don't care if they read or if they play toys quietly, um, but that has to be a full hour of just because the baby goes down for his nap at that time. Um, I like to step outside and just kind of take a breather. So I will pray. I will do um, just kind of a check-in, like how am I feeling? What's going on? Is my heart okay? Are we doing all right today? And then I also fit in some work in this hour. So whether that's working on a YouTube video or grading or Bible study or whatever it is um, that I need to get done, this is when I do that. And then at 3.30, everyone gets up from their quiet time. And again, we have another whole house tidy. Now you would think, you know, from 1.30 to 3.30, how dirty could their house get? You'd be surprised. And if you're a homeschool mom, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so we do, again, all hands on deck, let's tidy up a second time. And then they are allowed to go play. Typically they go play outside at this time and the baby is still napping. He typically takes a two hour nap. And so I will continue to get work done as I need to. And then at 4.30, they are allowed to have screen time. They're allowed to watch some TV while I start dinner. And that is, you know, our school day. Um, obviously not all of that is school, but that's kind of what our routine looks like. Now, this is for the days that we are not at co-op and not at Bible study. I have Bible study once a week during the school year, not every single week, but um, that picks up in September and usually goes till October, maybe November. I can't exactly remember, but um, so this is for the days that we are gonna be home all day. Now, the days when there are appointments, or co-op, you know, this looks a little different, um, but so far this is working really well for those at-home days. But I can say that I am absolutely loving this. I'm loving that I'm getting time with my littles. I'm loving that my house is a lot cleaner than it was last year. And I'm loving that everyone seems to be getting everything done. Again, knock on wood, because I, I don't know what's happening. This has never happened before. <laughs> Typically, we're still doing school until like three and four o'clock sometimes. So this block scheduling was kind of a meeting in the middle. Um, my sons are definitely more go with the flow. Whatever happens, happens. I am more the rigid scheduler. And so block scheduling kind of brought us together in the middle. Um, so let me know down below. Are you a block scheduler like me? Are you just whatever goes? We kind of have a rhythm, but eh, sometimes we stick to it. Sometimes we don't. Or are you a very rigid, detailed scheduler? Um, and coming up, I will have a video on my favorite books on Christian living. So you don't want to miss that. I thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.